I think it's the greatest experience of my life. I'm incredibly grateful. Most people's biggest stress and biggest worry in life is money. How do I say this diplomatically? They're full of shit. To have some sort of like baller lifestyle if you're a digital nomad. I rolled up to this spot called Chihiro. I just saw it on Google Maps and I thought it looked pretty cool. The thing about the coolest cafes is the coolest cafes are not laptop friendly. And that's, that's a good thing, right? You don't want a bunch of people just posting up all day on their laptops. And usually the cooler cafes have you know, more of an interesting vibe, like these low tables, couches, stuff like that. That's not really like work conducive. If you want to get work done, then you, know, you want to go to like a big chain coffee shop if you want to like get some real work done or like a co-working space. But today's the day I don't have my laptop, so I wanted to check out one of these cafes that were more of a vibe and less of a, a workstation. Yeah, check it out. It's what it looks like on the outside and then the inside. It's called Chihiro Coffee Shop. Try to give each other dreams that meant that make us happy. Huh? I'm just gonna peek inside. There's some There's some people working in there, so I didn't want to like be yapping in there while everyone's trying to get some work done. Um, it seems like a younger crowd. There's people getting work done, but there's also kids just like watching League of Legends on their laptops and uh, playing mobile games. Oh, come on. I think this is the first time I had a proper hot Vietnamese espresso. Yep, that tastes pretty much how I would expect it to taste. You guys know how, how dank Vietnamese coffee is, but Vietnamese espresso. <sighs> Multiply by 10. This might have been a miscalculation. Usually when I get a Vietnamese coffee, it's not that much coffee, and it's a lot of milk and a lot of condensed milk and a lot of coconut or, or whatever. So I thought it would be the same here. So I got an espresso and I got an Americano because I thought that the Vietnamese coffee would be like a quarter caffeine ca content. And then I needed like a full Americano to get me up to speed. This might mess me up. And then I still have to drink the Americano. I might be here for a while. So the reason I want to talk about this is every single video I've ever put out has multiple comments basically saying, how do I be a digital nomad? What do you do for money to be a digital nomad? Uh, I want to be a digital nomad, something along those lines. And I think most people are attracted to the idea of being a digital nomad because they're attracted to what they think the lifestyle is. Because when you look at social media, what you see from digital nomads are people with their laptops on the beach, people on like a tropical resort. It looks like they're on vacation every single day of their life. And what I need you guys to realize is that pretty much all of social media is fake. Not just like this digital nomad stuff, but like all of it. Most of the content that's put out is put out by people that want to kind of floss on you and kind of flex this fake lifestyle for the sake of likes and for the sake of attention. Because the reality is, I have never seen anybody actually working on a laptop on the beach. They go there, they take a photo, they work for like five minutes maybe, and then they put it away and then they go swimming. So for a lot of people, I think that the idea of being a digital nomad they're attracted to it the same way they're attracted to a lot of things on the internet. It seems like a get rich quick type of lifestyle. Throughout the history of the internet, there's always kind of been certain industries that have been a little bit like scammy. Not saying that the industry itself is a scam, but it attracts a lot of people that are kind of full of shit. For a long time, it was digital marketing, uh, coaching, like holistic coaching, lifestyle coaching is a big thing. Anything around mindfulness, anything about crypto, anything about stock trading, day trading, forex trading, even like workout programs. They kind of attract a lot of like borderline scammers. And unfortunately, I think the digital nomad lifestyle is starting to become one of those categories. Now, I'm not saying that anything that I listed is a scam. Obviously, I don't think going to the gym is a scam. I follow Tony Robbins, I read his books. I think that mindfulness and self-empowerment is really important but it's the industry that attracts a lot of scammers. And again, digital nomading has just kind of reached that point where a lot of people are kind of trying to sell you the lifestyle, a fake lifestyle, uh, a false representation of the lifestyle to get you to eventually buy something, right? The biggest red flag is when people try to get you to buy their course 
or by anything. Anything that makes you give money to that person, red flag should be going up. Now, I'm definitely not trying to discourage you from trying to become a digital nomad. I just think that if you're going into it for the wrong reasons, which most people are, you will be wildly disappointed and you'll regret the decision. But if you're going into it for the right reasons, then it's great. Because what do I actually think about this lifestyle? Well, for me, I think it's the greatest experience of my life. I'm incredibly grateful. I enjoy every single day of it and I hope it never ends. I was on my way back home, but I stopped by the river. Is this a park? I don't know what to call this, but look at this. Look at this. It looks like they're developing this strip to be something. Like I see these kind of like booths that generally turn into like small shops, right? They'll have like juice shops and pizza shops and whatever. But I don't think anyone's moved into any of them yet. There's kind of these food stalls over here. This one looks like it's selling burgers and burgers and hamburgers. And is that a McDonald's logo? <laughs> I think they just stole that picture, but apparently they're also selling McDonald's fries. But it doesn't seem like it's actually operational yet. That one's called Pickpock Food. Also, it doesn't look like it's operational yet. So I don't know if this place maybe comes alive at night or something, but it kind of looks like it's gonna be something and it isn't something yet. But these are these are cool chairs. Look at these. These are chairs. You actually like sit on them. It's like a one-person chair. Well, this is a good place to chat. So let's chat. So when I say being a digital nomad for the right reason, I don't mean that there are good reasons and bad reasons, okay? I'm not like condemning certain reasons and glorifying other reasons. I'm just letting you know realistically which reasons I think will lead you to disappointment and which ones will make you have a good time. And to me, the only like wrong reason is this idea that you're gonna have some sort of like baller lifestyle if you're a digital nomad. You're gonna go to parties all the time, you're gonna go clubbing, you're gonna go live in a tropical paradise, and you get to live it up and never have to work. A lot of people in the comments ask me how do they find a remote job because they think a remote job is an easy job. It's still a job. It's still a nine to five job for most people. It's still a 40 hours a week job for most people. And most digital nomads, they spend most of their time working or at home just like anybody else. Most of my day is still behind a computer working. A remote job isn't like a hack. Some people think that it's a hack in the sense that you can get all the benefits of a job without having to work. It doesn't work like that. How do you find a remote job? The exact same way that you find any other job. What skills do you need to have a remote job? The same skills you need to have any other job. It's just a job. Now, of course, people are going to say that there are certain jobs that are better for remote working. They're going to say things like freelancing, things like being an entrepreneur. But guess what? Even if you're not a digital nomad, these things make it easier to be a not digital nomad as well. Does that make sense? Even if you're not traveling and you're just staying in your hometown, being an entrepreneur or being a freelancer gives you freedom over your time. The things that give you freedom at home also give you freedom as a digital nomad. Okay, rant over because the people that are looking to be a digital nomad for the wrong reasons, they're not listening to anything that I'm saying right now. There's nothing I could say to convince them and they're still gonna be going around looking for like a new life hack to not have to be able to work and get all the benefits. So let's go back to the positives. Let's go back to why I think being a digital nomad is amazing. So what are those two reasons I talked about? The first one is for people that genuinely like new experiences. They like meeting new people. They like experiencing new cultures, new foods, just new things in general. Obviously, I don't have to explain this one. If you're a digital nomad, you're traveling, you're going all over the place, you're experiencing new things, new people. I love it. And if this is an experience and this is a life that sounds appealing to you, then you'll love being a digital nomad as well. So the second reason is a little bit more practical. It's about the financial arbitrage that you can do. Now, I know not everybody watching this is making US dollars or from a Western country, but about 85% of you guys watching this are from the US, so I'm talking to you guys. If you're from the US, you're living in one of the most expensive countries in the world. And if you're making a normal salary in US dollars and you're spending it at a place like Vietnam, your money goes a lot, lot further. Let's say you're making $50,000 a year in the US, you're probably in the top 1% of income when you come here to Vietnam. Now this is great for people that are retired, they want their money to stretch a long way, but I specifically want to focus in on entrepreneurs. If you're an entrepreneur or you're someone that's entrepreneurial or want to be an entrepreneur, I think that being a digital nomad and taking advantage of this financial arbitrage is really, really powerful. And the reason for this is that most people's biggest stress and biggest worry in life is money. And if you're entrepreneurial and you want to pursue something that does not have a guaranteed income and something that you don't know when you'll be able to get an income or a financial return from, 
Being a digital nomad takes that stress off of your back. When you have high living expenses like rent in the US, car payments, you're always gonna be thinking about how am I gonna make it to next month. Most entrepreneurs never take that leap because they have to think about the living expenses and how they're gonna survive for the next three months, six months, 12 months. You don't know when your endeavor is gonna start making money, if ever. Most companies fail, so it's too risky. But think about it like this. If you have 12,000 US dollars saved up in a bank account, you can live in Da Nang comfortably and not worry financially for a year. Think about that, for an entire year, you can focus solely on your entrepreneurship and what you're working on and not worry about how you're gonna make it to next month. That's a huge relief off your back, a huge load of stress off your back, and I think that it really increases your chances for success. So if you're a person that fits one of these profiles, and hopefully both of these profiles, then this digital nomad lifestyle, I think is something that might actually suit you well. But if you're someone where both of these things that I mentioned does not resonate with you at all, then I think like you can still try it, but I think you're gonna be wildly disappointed at what you find. Now, I've only been in Da Nang for about three months now, so I'm new to this lifestyle as well. As time goes by, my opinions are gonna change, my perceptions are gonna change. If you guys have different opinions, let me know in the comments. If you guys have any questions for me, let me know in the comments. I'd love to have a debate with you guys. If you're a digital nomad watching this, then let me know what your experiences are like. Yeah, I don't know. I think I had to think about this some more and I do want to make like a full video one day about this whole experience. The more I think about it, the more I realize things that other people told me that I think are kind of BS. Like off the top of my head, networking. I've heard people say, you don't even need a plan. Just get on a plane, come here, go around, network and you'll figure it out. I think that's the biggest piece of BS ever. All right, good talk. As much as I love this weather, it looks like it's gonna rain. So just in case, I'm gonna head home before that happens. See you there. Hey, Nala. How you doing? Did you miss me? You miss me? You want a treat? Let's go get a treat. Someone in the comments was asking me why I do baby voice with Nala. Cause she's my baby, you know. Oh, by the way, this is one of the shirts I got from the Han Market here. You can kind of tell, like I watched it twice. You can kind of tell where it's losing a little bit of elasticity, but overall, I think it's like a nine out of 10. It was like $2.80, let me find a mirror. That's what it looks like. I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? Worth it? So let's talk about the digital nomad community. And I know this is a sensitive topic and this is gonna rub some people the wrong way, but I'm just being honest here. Work is a big part of my life. A lot of people would call me a workaholic, that's fine, but I'm an entrepreneur and I'm in tech. So anybody who is an entrepreneur or entrepreneurial or anybody who's in tech, I generally have a lot to talk to them about. And in the world, in the whole world of entrepreneurship, there's kind of three categories of people. I know I'm doing a lot of these like category things, but stick with me here. The first category are people that are kind of like figuring it out. They haven't made a name for themselves, they haven't raised money, they haven't actually built anything yet, but they're figuring it out. Like they're working hard, they're, they're curious, they wanna network, they wanna learn. And I like these people. I love hanging out with these people. I love chatting with these people. Then on the opposite side of the spectrum, there's people that are running a business, they have employees, they have businesses that are revenue generating, they're successful, and I like those people too. I love learning from them, I love talking to them, I love sharing war stories, I like these people. And then there's kind of like this third category of entrepreneurship where, how do I say this diplomatically? They're full of shit. They're kind of people that call themselves entrepreneurs because it sounds sexy in this modern age and they don't really build anything, they don't really have any hard skills like engineering or design or marketing or any of that kind of stuff. They don't really work, like in a given week. They don't really work. And they kind of just like navigate the space trying to get a piece of someone else's thing or trying to like piggyback off of somebody else's work. Or they're just kind of like putting up a front so that they can be in the scene. Now, I'm from LA and LA is a fake capital, BS capital of the world. LA is the headquarters of fake it till you make it. And in LA, I would say the entrepreneurship community is like 85% trying to make it, 10% they're doing it, and like 5% of these bullshit artists. Unfortunately, in the digital nomad community, I think that bullshit category is like 40%. Now, of course, there are digital nomads that are doing great, interesting, inspiring things, but 40% is a lot. So the reason I bring this all up is it's been hard to make friends in that second category. I have plenty of friends that are digital nomads that are just like, good vibes, let's go surfing, let's go to the beach, let's go play pickleball or whatever, and that's cool. But I haven't been able to find that second group of people that I can kind of connect on an intellectual level with. 
and it's gotten to the point where I don't even want to like meet people professionally. Like I just want to like, I don't want to talk about work. I don't want to talk about what I do. I don't want to talk about it. This has kind of turned into a rant with no direction. I'm trying to find like a takeaway from this. If there's anything to take away from this, I would just say be cautious of people that glamorize the digital nomad lifestyle and realize that when you see kind of like the sensationalization online about the digital nomad lifestyle, it's just another case of the grass is always greener on the other side. For the right person, living a digital nomad life is going to be the best decision you ever made. For most people, I think it'll be the worst decision you ever made. I'm trying to spin this and turn this into like a life lesson or something, but I can't come up with anything. I don't know how long I've been talking. I don't even know what I said in this whole video, but if you made it up to this point, then I hope you found at least some of it useful in some way, or maybe it's just entertaining to listen to me yelling out into the void. Yeah, I don't know how to end this video. I hope you're healthy, I hope you're happy, and if you're not happy, I hope you realize that you deserve it, and I hope you have the courage to go out there and find it and grab it for yourself. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.